Hello, welcome to the third pre-recorded lecture for Math 155. Today I'm going to be talking about the dot product, which is a particular way of multiplying two vectors together. So last time I talked about scalar multiplication of a vector, where we have a scalar and a vector, and that scalar scales the vector, stretching it or shrinking it in the direction it's already going. Whereas uh, today we're going to take two vectors and we're going to multiply them together in a particular way, and we end up with a scalar. And that scalar tells us something about similarity between those two vectors. So this is really important for lots of different applications because if we've got two vectors we might want to know what the, the relationship is between those two vectors and the dot product tells us something about that. Okay so if we start off with a couple of definitions first of all we say that uh, two vectors are parallel if we can write u is equal to c times v where c is some positive constant. So for example if we have some vector v that looks like this and we have a positive c, so c is greater than zero, then if it's greater than one, it would be longer. So we can, in this case, write u is equal to c times v. So in this case, they're parallel. If c was negative, uh, for example, if c was negative, then we might have something that looks like this, where in this case, and u is equal to c times v, where c is less than zero. In that case, we have something that is anti-parallel. A second definition here is that we say that two vectors are orthogonal if the angle between them is pi by two radians. So this just means that they are, they are perpendicular. So for example, if these are our two vectors, u and v, and we have an angle of pi by two radians or 90 degrees, then we say that they are orthogonal. So in this case, they're orthogonal. Over here, we have um, that they are parallel. And this one down here is an example of being anti-parallel. OK, so what's this got to do with the dot product? Well, first of all, let's define what the dot product is. We say the dot product of two vectors is equal to the sum of each of the components of those two vectors multiplied together. So in R2, for example, if we do u dot v, where u and v are our vectors, uh, then this is just going to be equal to u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. Um, so we indicate it with this little dot here. That's our notation here. So we take u1 times v1 and u2 times v2. And similarly, if we're in R3 or in Rn, we go exactly the same. So in R3, u dot v is going to be u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u2 v3. So in general, if we have u and v in Rn, then u dot v is just going to be equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of ui times vi. So for example, if we have these two vectors down here, a and b in R2, if we want to do a dot b, then what we do is we take this first component here, minus one, and we multiply it by the first component of the second vector, which is one. So we have minus one times by one. And then we're gonna add this to two here, that's by one. So we take the second component of each vector and multiply them together. So plus two times one. So we're going to have minus one plus two, which is just equal to one. So note here that we've taken two vectors and we've ended up with a scalar. So we don't end up with a vector again, we end, we end up with a scalar. So this is always the case with the dot product. So if we take c dot d here now, where c and d are in R3, again, same process. Here we're going to have uh, minus one times four plus two times one plus two times one. So we're going to have two plus two minus four, which is going to be equal to zero. So the dot product between C and D is equal to zero in this case. And if we try and do A dot D, well, A is in R2 and D is in R3. So this is not defined. So they need to be in the same. Um, they need to be in the same space, they need to have the same number of coordinates uh, or components, I should say, um, otherwise it's not defined. So this is not defined. 
And that's because A is in R2 and D is in R3. So what are some of the properties of the dot product? Well, as we've already seen, the dot product takes two vectors as inputs and returns a scalar. And it obeys many of the laws that we already know about multiplication, but not all of them. So if, for example, if u, v, and w are vectors in Rn and c is a scalar, then if we take u dot u, so we take the dot product of a vector with itself, what does that mean? Well, they're both pointing in exactly the same direction. They're, they're on top of each other. This just gives us uh, the magnitude of u squared. So it's magnitude squared. We also know that if we take u dot v, this is going to be the same as v dot u, and this is known as commuted, commutivity. So this is just like normal multiplication. We can um, switch the order around. One times two is the same as two times one. Uh, we also know that it's distributive. So that means that if we take u dot uh, v plus w in parentheses, then that's the same as u dot v plus u dot w. And the same applies if we have a scalar to multiply by u, uh, then c dot u, sorry, c times by u dotted with v is the same as c times by u dotted with v. Uh, we can also move the scalar the other way around. This is also the same as having u dotted with c times v. So this is known as distributivity. And then finally, if we have zero, zero vector dotted with u, that's going to give us zero. So these are all relatively straightforward to show. Um, but note that there's no statement like u dot v is equal to zero implies that either u is equal to zero or v is equal to zero. In other words, this means that just because we end up with the, the output of our dot product being zero doesn't mean that either we have the zero vector u or, or the zero vector being v. Uh, and we've already seen this up in this example here, because when we took c dot d, now c and d were not uh, zero vectors, neither of them was a zero vector, but we ended up with the dot product being zero. So this is, a, this is where we diverge from some of the normal rules we'd see in scalar multiplication. What does this mean geometrically then? Well, we can look at uh, two vectors u and v, for example, if I call this u and this v, and think about the angle between them. If we take the smallest angle between them here yeah, as being theta, so always take the smallest angle between them, then we can write down the dot product um, as being u dot v is equal to the magnitude of u times by the magnitude of v times by cosine of theta. This comes from law of cosines um, as well as using properties of the dot product from above, but um, you don't need to know how to, to derive this. So what's this actually saying then? Well, it's saying that u dot v is equal to length of u times by the length of v times by the cosine of the angle between them. And this means that we're multiplying three things together and not just two things together. So that means that u dot v can be zero if either the length of u is equal to zero or the length of v is equal to zero or the cosine of the angle between them is equal to zero. So the angle between two vectors, theta, can have a really big impact on the dot product. So let's look at what our graph of cos theta will look like. So this is a graph of cos theta up here, we're at plus one, down here we're at minus one. Uh, we go through zero at pi by two radians, so 90 degrees, and we go through, so we go through minus one 
at pi radians or 180 degrees. So we actually don't care about what goes on when uh, theta is less than zero or when theta is greater than pi radians. That's uh, because we only care about the smallest angle between the vectors. In other words, this angle here. We only care about that smallest angle and so that's always going to be less than or equal to pi radians, 180 degrees. So what happens if we're in these different regions? We can think about what's going on here. So if we're in this region uh, between zero and pi by two radians, that means that our vectors u and v look something like this. This is our theta between them. So this is representing an acute angle. So here we've got zero, uh, less than or equal to theta, less than pi by two. So this means that we have an acute angle between our vectors. Uh, this also corresponds to cos of theta being greater than zero. Okay, what happens if we're on this borderline where we have pi by two radians? Well, at that point, our vectors u and v uh, have an angle of pi by two radians or 90 degrees between them. So they're gonna be orthogonal. And cos of theta is gonna be equal to zero. So I'll go back to u and v. So if our dot product is equal to zero, that tells us that if neither u nor v is the zero vector, then cos theta must be equal to zero and therefore they must be orthogonal. So that's a really important fact. And then finally, if we're in this region over here where we have um, cos of theta is um, less than zero, then that means that uh, we have an obtuse angle. So that means our vectors look something like this. So I suppose this is our u, this is our v. We've got this angle between them theta. We've now got cos of theta being less than zero, which tells us that this is obtuse. So this is for pi by two being less than theta, which is less than or equal to pi radians. So the dot product tells us something important about the angle between two vectors. The dot product is also really useful for comparing the directions of vectors and determining how much of one vector is pointed in the direction of another. And this is uh, often looked at in terms of projections. And there's two types of projections. One is a scalar projection, uh, and the other is a vector projection. Okay, so what does that look like? Suppose we've got two vectors, V and U here, and we want to project V onto U. So how can we do that? Well, if we imagine that we've got, let me do it in orange. Let me, let us imagine that we have sun up here, and it's shining rays down onto this vector V, and then it casts a shadow onto U. And that gives us some other vector W, which is equal to some scalar times by u. So that shadow is a new vector and it's projecting v onto u. So what, what c in this case, well, we say that c is the component of v on u, projected onto u, and this is calculated as u dot v, so using our dot product, divided by the magnitude of u squared. No, this is going to be a scalar because u dot v is a scalar and the magnitude of u squared is also going to be a scalar. So this is our c. And our projection is going to be our w, which is equal to the projection of v onto u. So this is our new vector. And that's just going to be c times u. In other words, that's going to be our component of v in the direction of u times by so it's going to be rescaling u by the component of v that is in the direction of u. 
So note that if we have um, an obtuse angle between our vectors, so for example, if we have something that looks like this, if this is our V and this is our U, then in that case, cos theta is going to be negative, and therefore um, we're going to have the, the uh, component of V in the direction of U is going to be negative. Uh, and what's going on there, if we can imagine our sun shining rays down, here we're going to end up with the shadow pointing, should be a straight line, pointing in that direction, so it's anti-parallel to U. So it's pointing in the other direction because our cos theta is negative. So what are some of the uses of the dot product? Well, one very common use is to um, use the dot product to weight a vector by another vector. So for example, we often uh, represent grades as a vector. So vectors are used to, to represent or capture data. Uh, and then we can calculate a weighted average of that data. So for example, if you were taking a course where you had three assessments, say two midterms and a final, and your scores were 43, 27, and 63, and uh, then we could work out what your total score is a weighted average by taking the dot product of your scores vector with some weighting vector, so weights. So if we take your score vector here, say 43, 27, 63, and suppose that the first assessment was say out of 50 and is worth 25%, and the second is again out of 50 and worth 25%. And the third is out of 100 and worth 50%. And if we can take the dot product of these things together, then we'll get your average weighted score. So this is done all the time. This is a really common use of the dot product. Another really important use of the dot product is to work out the similarity between two sets of data. So for example, if we have these um, average plant lengths here for three different uh, species. So if we set these to be vectors in R4, and we've got some other plant that's growing, uh, which is given by these measurements here. And we assume that as the plants grow, they have the same proportions. We want to work out this growing plant, which one is it most likely to be? Is it most likely to be this one, this one, or this one? Well, what can we do? Well, we can look at the cosine of the angle between uh, the, these two vectors, and we can work that out using the dot product. So for example, cos of theta one, so for the first iris, is gonna be just equal to, if we call this uh, vector Vs, dot it with M, so this is Vs. So we take the dot product and we divide it by the magnitude of Vs, times by magnitude of M. And that comes out to be approximately 0.95, if you do the math. Where does this come from? Just to recall, that formula is just a rearrangement of this formula here. So if we rearrange that, we get cos theta one is approximately equal to 0.95. If we do the same for cos theta two, then we end up with that as uh, approximately equal to 1.00. And if we end up with cos theta three being approximately equal to 0.999. So in this case, it's pretty similar to all of them, but this is the largest. So this is most likely. So this is assuming that they're growing in the same proportions. If we were to draw something like this, if these were, if this was just in two dimensions, then we're essentially saying that we expect the proportions to stay the same. So we'd expect a, a flower, a plant to be growing along this line. And suppose this is our first iris, our second iris in this case, and the other two are somewhere off here and here. And our measurement for the new one is around about here. So this is from our M, for example. So because the angle 
that this vector here is very close to the angle for the vector pointing towards this point up here, we'd say, according to our model that similar parts have similar proportions, that this blue one is most similar to the iris given by this point up here. Now, because the angle between these two vectors is very small, that means that the smaller plant is growing in roughly the same proportions as the larger plant. Now, you might ask, why don't we just look at the distance between um, the points given by these vectors? Well, if we just looked at the distance, then we would have assumed that our growing plant is most similar to this point here because the distance is smallest but it's not growing in the same proportions as that plant. So whilst it might look like this plant the most at the moment, because it's growing in this direction up here, it's eventually going to be most like this plant here, if we're assuming that similar plants have similar proportions. So those are a couple of examples of, of how we can use the dot product. Um, make sure you're familiar with uh, the dot product, um, as well as terminology about Parallel, parallel vectors and orthogonal vectors and scalar and vector projection. Okay, thanks very much.